I'm Mel Stewart, and this is the Swim Sound Podcast. Joining me today, USA Swimming's national team resident artist, Olympic medalist, 400 IM specialist. Of course, I'm talking about Jay Litherland. Hey, buddy, thanks for coming on. Mel, thank you so much for having me. I, I've never interviewed you. I don't think I have. I don't think so. I think we've only really like met at Golden Goggles and stuff, but not really an interview. You're going to Golden Goggles this year? I think with Liv, yeah, maybe. Maybe, maybe. I'm not going to go. I'm staying home for Thanksgiving. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think Bob is like trying to make us go to OTC, Olympic Training Center, right around that time. So, yeah. You know, your career has been carved by Georgia, but you're, you're now at Arizona with the largest pro group on the planet. And um, I, I, you, you're a pure confident guy, man. This is, this is, that sounds intense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you seem chill. How are you handling this? Uh, <laughs> yo, I think last year was a big adjustment, just training with Bob. But I feel like I trained with Bob throughout the years when I was at Georgia, through the summers, because um, we would go for his like Bob training camp. So I kind of knew his like style of coaching and him and Jack were like are super similar in like writing workouts too. So, um, but last year was very intense. And I know this year he's, Bob's gonna go 10 times more. I, I know through Chase, there was a lot of collaboration. And I, I think, you know, talking to, to uh, Jack Bowerly, and Bob, knowing Bob, knowing Bob since Bob was coaching 10 and under age group back when he was the assistant coach for David Marsh 30 years ago. Um, they believe in honest work. And I think if you can't do what I am unless you do honest work. Is that, is that, a, is that a fair assessment? Yeah, very true, very true. Um, you know, you can't fake a boy. You can't fake a boy. You can't fake a four and I am. All right, we, I don't want to stay on this topic too long, but I do want to ask you, I mean, if it's uh, is this the most intense training environment you've ever been in, or is it, uh, does it feel like this is where it should be? Mm, I, this is the way it should be, for sure. Um, I mean, I think I've had my years of, like, intense training in high school and in Georgia, but, yeah, this is with the amount of, like, just talent in our group, the the people that we train with is unmatched. Yeah, yes. I mean, the the hottest name on the planet is there. Chase is in the water, staring down. Mm -hmm. Leon Marchand, and and it's like I it, I don't know. I don't know about pushing off the wall on repeats. Uh, are you are you are you eye to eye with these guys? Or is, are you circle swimming? Are you on the other side of the pool? Why does how does that work? Um, it's pretty like. I think we have a group, like a set of people that lead the lanes. Um, so, yeah, we're like, it's kind of crazy to see like the pro group. And um, when we train with the college team, it's like you see the heat of the first heat and you're like, dang, that's a whole A final for the 4 a.m. Olympics. Like, Jeez. Maybe we'll come back to this, but just for, for, for everybody out there listening, I, I, I introduced Jay as, as the as the national team resident artist. He he is uh, he's 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 got a band. Everybody knows about your your you call it a band or a group. It's the uh, uh, the trips mm -hmm. you and your brothers. How, how how would you describe it? Uh, I think it's a group. It's a rap rap group. I don't even know if I want to call it rap, but yeah, we we started making music like maybe the end of our college years like our fifth year and yeah we just it started out as like we were free selling the car and put on a beat and then now we're here kevin's making the beats my bro um so it, it, yeah i'm in a group with my two other brothers we're triplets so i don't know if uh people know like if i'm a triplet there's like some people on the team on the national team that like they're like, yo, you're a triplet. That's crazy. Which is, yeah. But wow, it's it's kind of fascinating. Um, just just on this topic, the I just shared you. This is recorded. This is probably going to drop in about forty eight hours from this recording right now. After we do a little post production and clean up my flubs, but <laughs> I, I just I just I just followed um, the account 
Oh, you did. Uh, what's, what's, yeah, what's I just followed and shared to my story. What's so? What if, if people want to hear you and your brothers? Where do they go? So, well, Spotify, Apple Music, I mean, all the music platforms. It's Trips, uh, T R three I's P S S. Go check it out. I I like your sound. It's this is a this is a groove I could slip into. Um, yeah, made me totally. smile. Yes. <laughs> No, it's it, it's it, no, it's it's just. Um, I, th- I think everybody wishes that they had this this side to you know this aspect of their of their life and personality, and they could be creative. And um, you've definitely got that gear. And uh, it's I was I was like, wait a minute. I shared the I actually shared the one where you guys are topping Spotify, and I'm like, and you're thanking everyone. Uh, I was like, Dude, this is this is great. Um, so when we when we um, so when you when you do your next drop, you have a drop coming soon, right? Yeah. So we're about to drop a single. I don't know if I'm allowed to say these things, but next week, next week we're gonna do like a little pop up single, and then setting up for um, an EP that's been been on the holes for too long. Um, that's going to be out at either end of September or early October. So, well, you're, 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 I mean, there's, you've got things going on in your life. So, I, don't, I know you don't want to be too nailed down to the date. When you do, I know you're going to have a lot of clips going up on social. Um, I'm going to share, sometimes going to share, and I'm going to let everybody know what's well, going on. But yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, yeah, no, it's uh, it, it, you know, it's it's like in, until until people hear your sound, uh, the trip sound, they don't know. You've got to hear it. You got to hear, you got to hear the magic to understand that. You know, this this facts. This true. Thank you. Thank you. So, so well, just just on on this topic, it's a uh, you know, it's it's yeah. Are you do you you're, are you planning to swim through this Olympics? Uh, would you swim beyond this Olympics in terms of music? You know, are you going to keep developing your music career? I've been kind of thinking about it, but yeah, I think I really want to just keep going, do both. I mean, you know, swimming, I still love to swim. Um, and and I, I love making music, which is like, we're going to drop an EP, but we got so many other songs that we want to like drop too. So... Um, yeah, I think I want to just keep going with what we've been doing. Um, and assuming too, like, you know, I think I wanted to, I want to keep going until I stop having fun with the sport. And I think right now it's like not even close. So is it, is it a situation where you're looking out over the horizon, looking past Paris and seeing LA 2028 and you're like, U.S. soil, yeah, yeah. L.A. too. The L.A. is going to be crazy. It, it will be crazy. It's people that in your generation and a lot of our a lot of our audience, Swim Sam, and our and our listeners, about half that listen to the podcast are going to know this. There was a period of time after 1980. There was a boycott, and we felt like maybe the Olympics were in peril. Mm-hmm. They weren't going to happen. They were going to continue. And the 1984 LA Olympics, the Hollywood Olympics, turned it all around. It's one of the most successful Olympics financially in terms of coverage. So if you've got if you've got the legs to keep going, mm-hmm. it'll be worth it. Oh, for sure, for sure. I mean, I think, yeah, I I hope to keep doing the four AM too. At what I'll be 32, 32 then. And just just starting, just starting to benefit from all those years of base work. Yeah, no, yeah I, at that point, just I don't think I'll need to do any training. I think I'm just I'll hit like a like a god level. It's the, the way I see it. You, after all these years with Jack, and then your time with Bob, you're you just you just go on a taper at a certain point, yeah. and you could just taper <laughs> forever because you got the base work done. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, after Paris, it's like four-year taper, and then who knows, another 
was an, another medal, and who knows? No, no, I love it. The, the um, I, I dug back into your career. This, let me let me say this as I wanted to go backwards a little bit, but as but before we do that, you know, you've got the the two the 2023 Pan American Games coming up, mm-hmm. and you are the you're the team leader. How did you become team leader? Team leader. Yeah, you're the team leader. It's it's uh, that's like, are you the team leader? I don't know if it's like selected yet, right? I don't think it's selected yet, but definitely, I'm not, let's, we'll, we'll just we're going to call it. You're a leader on the team. You're definitely going to be. You are. You you've uh, you're bringing age and wisdom, and uh, let's just say that uh, the you, you, you uh, national team, younger national team members can can lean on you. All right, so it's coming up in October. Yep. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm super excited. Chile's going to be crazy. I've never been to Chile. Like, hey, it's going to be sweet. No, I'll be fine. Uh, yeah, I mean, team leader, I didn't think really, like, you know, I I don't really even consider, like, the age part of it, too. Like, it feels like I'm still, like, 22 almost like still doing this too so it's kind of crazy to like think and see i'm i'm up there with in that like range for that so um but yeah it's it's nice i got a couple of georgia guys um a georgia guy that i, I trained an asu guy that i trained with uh, oh he's like a sprinter so he's not with bob but um yeah it's gonna be sweet Brooks, in in terms of, uh, so I just want to bring up to, uh, the 2023 Pan American Games. But in terms of like, y- you mentioned something when you said you know a lot of people don't know that that uh, I'm a triplet. Um, it, and my understanding is that you were born were you born in Osaka, Japan? Is that correct? Mm-hmm. And yeah, uh, you're, you're fluent in Japanese. Hi. So this, <laughs> it's is is um. You know, I don't know that backstory. It's like I don't understand. You know, you're born in, in in Japan, and so at what point did 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 you did you come to the United States? And at what point did you say did you have the option to represent Japan at the previous? Yeah, time? it was. Yeah, it was kind of crazy because so I was born in Japan. Um, my dad's from New Zealand, um, and he has an an American uh, U.S. passport as well. So. Um, I have three citizenships, but um, yeah, I was born in Japan. I kind of moved around a lot growing up. Um, I lived in Dubai for a year, um, and then uh, and then made my way to the states. I lived in Cali um, for like two years or so, and then Miami. So like totally opposite side, um, and then. Orlando, Miami, and then Georgia. So, kind of, kind of all over. Um, right. Georgia was the longest, and that's where I went to school. So, yeah, I, I miss Georgia a lot. You, you could, so you could have represented New Zealand also. Mm-hmm. So you could have, like, you. I mean, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to play the what if game, but the what if game is you don't have to go to U.S. trials. You just. You just take, you put your time up, you make the net, you make the the team because I, you know, and then you um you do a straight taper, one taper for the Olympics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, true. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think so. I think when I was like sixteen, I represented the U.S. for Junior Worlds, um, and that that team that was like pretty stacked with so many Olympians now. Um, Kayla was on that, uh, Gunnar Bentz, um, it was a lot. I think Blake Peroni, maybe it's like, yeah. Um, but yeah. And then I think I didn't really like have a choice. I think I was just like, all right, I would, I mean, U S is the best country to represent and it's amazing. And I wanted to keep going with it um and then my brothers they actually did try to go represent New Zealand for Rio but they were like each of both of them they were like maybe half a second off the A cut 
So yeah, they but they were like super close too. So um I think it was the two fly and then the mile. So um but yeah, no, I, I think I knew those were the op- those were like options too, but nah, when you represent US Gotta stick with it. It's the best. No, no, I, no, I appreciate that. It's uh, and it, and it turned out well. You, you you've got Olympic hardware. You're gonna be an Olympic medalist for the rest of your life. But uh, what I'm hearing in terms of the genetics is that you could do 200 fly or the mile. In addition to in addition to the 400, I am. I, I guess I was. I've been doing a lot of fly this year and last year. So, um, but yeah, two fly, two back maybe. I don't know. No. So we it, let's, let's let's put some context on this. Let me ask you some questions about because yeah. when, when when people think about about four hundred IMers, there you know there's always some magic in there. Is your is your PB in the two hundred meter free one forty seven? Is it still one forty seven? Yeah. Why not the four by two, buddy? Man, you just you just you, you if someone lets you do some speed work. Ooh, you get into the so final. We know how we we know your fingers are magic. We've we've seen what you do on that last fifty. <laughs> True. We got to tell Bob to get me in a uh, little bit of spring group or something. It's uh, 133, 200 yard free. You, you've you been four, four, is that right? 133, yeah. 200 yard free PB. Your 500 free was a 414? Yes. Um, yeah, right have around. You done, have you done 400 meter free? Yeah, I think I, went, I was 450 this year. All right. Oh, 350, 350. Yeah. <laughs> So you've got all these, you got all, you got all this talent in your back pocket, and you, you on your four and I am usually pop your backstroke, and then you crush souls coming home, and <laughs> in, in freestyle. Um, the uh, so yeah, I did, I did want to ask you. I was like, that's that's. I, I think once you're in the one forty seven territory, it's sort of like, yeah, why wouldn't you go for the four by two just for fun? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, for sure. It's. I mm-hmm. you're not you're not saying anything. <laughs> it's Do you know what, like yeah i i wish i think i need more like like just raw speed from the jump because like once they get to like the 150 mic i'm like uh, it's too late to kind of make a move you know so yeah i think i need to tune that up you you need your competitors to have suffered for at least 300 meters before you drop <laughs> the camera on them Breast stroke. yeah 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 what was you know your split in like in 2016 was uh was eye popping what was it was it, you came home in like a 57 three on the last 100 meters in the 400 i am at u.s trials oh was it okay yeah, yeah no it was I, I i i made a note of it i was like that's that's uh that's how you become great <laughs> yeah i mean i think even like the last like like 35 meters it's like you kind of block out especially in the 4 a.m you like you gotta just let something else do it for you well here you've been doing home. you've been doing clinics have you done a few clinics now so uh, yeah. yeah 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 so i i would think that getting a clinic from an olympic medalist in the 400 a.m would be the most meaningful experience for a young summer certainly in terms of information yeah. Um, so what, you, you've got it all. You're a decathlete. What's um what 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 have you done recently? Did you do a, a clinic recently? Yes, I did one um, in Milwaukee. It was after um, the Chicago Tier Series, but um, yeah, that that team, Robert White, the head coach, shout out to his his team. You know, they're very, they're amazing. They're so cute. Um, we did we did a couple. Um, excuse me. We did a, we did a couple. Um, I think we were focusing a lot on like turns and just like starts and kind of the basics of each stroke. But oh, back to rest turn was a big one. But um, yeah, I think yeah, the I loved in clinics. It was my first one. Yeah, that in a while, but um, they're so fun. Everyone's so cute. It, 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 but I think of like just full of energy. I think, 
Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, because it's like a full, you kind of see like the next generation and it's just like, wow, you guys are like, you guys have a lot more raw talent, speed, knowledge at such a young age. And it's like, you kind of see that and you're like, wow, I guess that's why over time, like so many swimmers get faster and faster. It's like, even yeah, the kids that I worked with, like, I don't think I knew how to do a back to breast until like maybe high school, mid high school. But these guys were like middle schoolers, like kind of perfecting that. So it's exciting to see. When I think of 400 IMers, I, I feel a certain kinship. I, I swam 200 fly. Big part of the reason why I swam 200 fly was I would go to meets and there'd be, you know, 30 heats of the 100 free. Mm-hmm. There'd be three or four heats, 200 fly. I swam four and I, I swam four and I had two. There would be three or four heats. Oh, yeah. I don't have to beat that many people. <laughs> yeah. And I'm going to, I'll be fine. I don't know. Yeah. I don't, but also that is pretty much all I could do. But uh, how, how did, how did four and I am become your go to? Um, I think like, so growing up at Dynamo, we like just, our coaches would always put us in like just every meet, every, every meet would be like a different event. Like, I think if you didn't leave Dynamo swimming all the events, like you were in the, like, you were not coached, um, proper i think um i think that was the goal for like dynamo to be like if you're coming in here you're gonna swim every single event you're gonna release it at least once um i think we had like a pentathlon every year where we do a hundred of each stroke and then a 2 im so that kind of like forced people to someone be good at breaststroke too um so and then I think 4 a.m., it was my first trials cut. Um, yeah, I think just switching strokes is always, like, fun to me. It's always, um, you got to change gears every single time. It's like, if you're, if you go too hard on back, you can have 100 breaths to, like, kind of ease it down before the free, or not ease it down, but, like, hold it together. So, no, I like four AM. Paid attention, and you did the work, and and, and it netted, yeah. it netted hardware. The when uh, when you went to the Olympic Games, it's so weird. It's like 2021. We'll call the 2020 Olympic Games. Mm-hmm. Um, with your background and being born in Japan, did you did you feel like that was did you get did you get more media attention with within Japan? Was it was it an interesting story? Um, yeah, uh, it was crazy. I mean, even, um, yeah, I think I wish like there was a crowd there, like my family were there and, um, I think they were, they had to watch a video like on the screen, but, um, but yeah, I think just being able to like speak Japanese was the biggest thing. I think during the media and stuff, they, they would be like, yo, so you're Japanese, right? And then I just started typing Japanese. They're like, oh, what is this? Um, but yeah, it was so sick. Um, yeah, it was, uh, everyone was super nice. Japan is, it's always so dope to go back and like train there or race there. So, um, yeah, it's awesome. And, and Andrew, the topic of what you might not know about Jane Litholin, we've got triplet uh, fluent in Japanese, and you're you're I, they love you there. So you're you're signing partnerships over there. Tell tell me just just go go through and tell me a little bit about the partnerships you have in Japan. Yeah, so I um, just recently signed um, as an ambassador for Pokari Sweat. Um, it's this dope dope drink uh i grew up drinking it so much um it's like literally the only thing that gets me through like every time i go to japan I'm like vending machine sweat car sweat um 
and it's, it's like a dream come true to be able to like represent them drink them on a daily like it's so sweet um and then yeah i think even being able to drink it during like practices in arizona when it's like when i'm just sweating all the time like that's like the best drink to have honestly so that's all right like, you also have you're also working with the green tea company who, who which one is that yeah and the ito in ito in is a big um green tea company too i love i love tea uh you know i can drink tea and Pocari sweat like back to back it's so good um like i swear like water doesn't exist in my system it's literally just tea and Pocari. um but yeah it's we're working on yeah ito and has been a great um company as well i've been so fortunate to be able to work with them i think in tokyo after the silver i swear they sent me like i think it was like 10 boxes of green tea in the village it was crazy and we like all my roommates are like yo what are you gonna do with this um but yeah, it was so good. I, I love, love those drinks so much. Well, but you're an established pro. You have them. You're also a Mizuno athlete. Mm-hmm. And uh, a lot of people love that suit. It's a, um, it's, uh, you may, have, have you felt like you've been supported as, as a pro and been able to live your life yeah. financially? Yeah. Um, yeah, Mizuno's been the best company I've seen. that was another dream of mine to be signed by them um there were like I think just being able to like race in the the suit that I love is so huge so I'm so grateful for that I know there's some athletes um that you know raced um some suits sometimes they recent suits that they don't prefer but um yeah i'm just lucky to be able to race into the the ferrari people call it you know the the crazy uh the porsche the ferrari or yeah it's so sick it's um yeah no it's uh, a lot of a lot of athletes like it they like the compression and it's yeah. um Let's just say that among national team members, you're you're being a little bit cryptic, but a lot of people don't talk about it, but there are a lot of elite athletes like this suit Mm -hmm. and wish they were wearing this suit. Uh, I don't want to share something that you can talk about, but I I think that you might be in development on some shows, maybe a YouTube show, or is this something you're considering? Uh, It's definitely still like an idea like i still haven't really done like a whole crazy thing about it because i definitely want to like connect with like the right people um but it's an idea that i was kind of thinking about with connecting music and swimming together where um essentially was where i would come up with come up to like rappers and other artists um tell them if they want to learn how to swim um and it kind of the whole like premise and the focus of this is to kind of provide a fun way where people can learn how to swim through like a interactive um a show instead of like a tutorial on uh, like YouTube that you can find anywhere. Um, and I don't know, I think it would be super fun to like see people's favorite artists like trying to learn how to swim and then kind of doing like a little like race at the end being like, and then we bring in like special guest Olympians where they race up to D and the guy does a, the artist does a 25 or something. So, um, still a, an idea, an idea, but, um, 
yeah, it's kind of like what I've been trying to see if there, that can happen. I, I, mean, I, I can't think of anybody else who could do this. You're the person to do it. This is this is uh, <laughs> this is definitely a show designed from from your you know this this is perfect for you. <laughs> so uh, I I hope you do it. I don't know how you're gonna have time to do it, but if you did have time to do it, I'll be watching first. Let's go. Thank you. <laughs> and Swim Slam will share it because we need Let's new. Interesting, we want we want to see new and interesting content. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So so no pressure, but just do it. <laughs> All right. All right. <laughs> All right, but so in in terms of let's let's bring it back to the, the to the swim topic. Let's get chlor- chlorinated again. Um, uh, you know, you've been to the big show. You've been to trials twice. You've been to the Olympics. You're you're you know you've stood on the podium. Um, you know how do you how do you manage the stress? I feel I feel bad when I when I go to trials because I I especially the foreigner I am because that's like the worst, <laughs> the most intense pressure that first final walking out. Uh, yeah, how, yeah. how are you? How are you managing the stress of that over this training season, with with knowing that's that's on the horizon? Mm, I mean, it's you really don't. You gotta just kind of go with it as like it's your first time, and I think the hype of it is so intense that it like. And it's so cool. It's so cool. I mean, uh, especially in now, it's going to be an indie, like, it's going to be a whole different vibe than Omaha. Um, but, you know, I think it's going to be such a great show. The trials, the trials is, it's such an amazing, like, every, everything from, like, the walkout to, the racing to the stands, everyone is so electric in there. So it's just take that energy with you. Yeah. And people are so fast with that. So do you, do you wish for am or maybe this is the second or third day, maybe the fourth day? Nah, first is perfect. Get it, get it done. Get it, get it out of the way, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. No, it's you, the 4 a.m. is like even at Worlds when. It was the last day. That was like torture. Oh my gosh. Because you're just kind of sitting around and you're like trying to hype yourself up. But it was, so it's 2019 Worlds. That was um, that was your PB. Is that, mm-hmm. is that still your PB? 409.22? You don't need, you don't know your personal best time? <laughs> was that it? It is it. That's it. That's it. That's what you read. <laughs> was that from that world? It was from that world champs. Yeah. Hey. Well, if if we got it wrong, somebody call us out. But I we're we're I'm, we're, we're gonna stick a pen in it right there. That was it. <laughs> so yeah, do you want do you want to play rowdy gains and and say hey man, this is what it's gonna take. This is what it's gonna take to make the Olympic team in, mm-hmm. in, in 2024. You want to make a guess? Uh, but I want to say like four, six, four, seven. Yeah, it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be fast. Mm-hmm. It's gonna be, but the time doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. That's right. It doesn't matter. Yeah, we we always we, we always play the prediction game, and we I, we always predict a little bit too fast, especially for trials. It's like if oh, people, yeah? people forget about the time. Oh, you, you, I think people oftentimes in, in sports will will predict times, and mm-hmm. and on by and large at. U.S. trials and at the Olympics, you, we, you get it wrong a lot because people don't swim as fast, and everybody mm-hmm. forgets because they just remember, you know, what was the point? Yeah, who who went one? Who touched one, two, three? Yeah, true, true, true. Yeah, it's just, it's just a race, and in yeah. and in the middle of this, you're going to be releasing your music all throughout the year. Throughout the year, yeah, yeah, I think so. I think, yeah, I think music does like such a great, like, just such a nice like release. Like, I notice, I realized that when I like released music for the first time, it was like, 
why do they call it a release but it's like a release like of yourself your art like um and i think yeah it's nice it's like music so therapeutic to me and it's so like it keeps my brain going instead of you know always thinking about swimming because that's always like that's too much what's the what's the process you know what is that um you know where where does how do, how do you how do you create a lot of people have their own process yeah it's, it's, we sit around and it and it floats through it just, it's downloaded from the universe yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. Uh, what, what do you have a process um <laughs> i think you just let it like you don't yeah i don't know i don't think of myself like really doing anything it's just like comes comes out um but i definitely like to hear like the beat i can't really go anything off the dome or like acapella um i definitely like to get out the like flow and the the rhythm of like what i'm gonna be flowing with throughout the song and then i kind of like write something up but um yeah and like freestyling, I'm still trying to learn that, but yo, I'm so bad at freestyling. It's crazy how like artists do that. Well, we're gonna we're gonna point everybody in your direction, and uh, and, and we're gonna we're gonna work on and blowing up that account. Let's go, and, uh, Thank you. We're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna push them to Spotify. Where is, should they go anywhere else? Uh, Spotify, Apple Music. Um, we're on SoundCloud. Um, like all the platforms will be on there. So thank you guys for joining in and listening or we have a lot more to drop. So if, 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 um, if, if, if I were, if I could be you and I could do anything, mm -hmm. I, I might, I might, I might, I might try to set up, I might have some gigs set up at trials. <laughs> Why not? You're done. You're done. Aren't you done? Unless you do, uh, unless, unless you do two hundred free, are, are you gonna? You know, may, maybe you just like punch. You punch your ticket for one or I am, and then just do you know do gigs for another eight days. Do you play any instruments? I. You don't want to know. I played. I. I played. I was. I was in a singing group until I was thirteen years old, and then my mm -hmm. parents had to choose. But they said I had to choose between swimming or music. Mm, that was it. Dang. Yeah. Dang. Uh, well, we can bring that back probably at the gig. I don't think so. I don't think so. It's not. It's not going to work. But I would. I. I think it'd be fun if if uh, if you had a gig set up at, at, at Trials and in Indy somewhere, some far. It could. It could be. It could just be VIP. That'd be crazy. <laughs> that would be crazy. Yeah. So just, yeah. Just, Food for, for thought, sure. more more pressure. I'm just trying to put more pressure on you for trials because your trial says that there isn't enough pressure. <laughs> Come on, bring it over. Bring it over, bring it over. All right, you need me. I always feel for like feel like you can reach out and talk to me, okay? For sure, thank you. Thank you for such a dope, beautiful conversation. Mm -hmm.